start a video on building fixtures to rebuild a Ford 8.8 inch rear diff. This particular one is an IRS diff. You can see by the obvious missing axle seats. Um, so what we want to do is we want to build a fixture that will hold the rear diff with this area open so that we can work in there and also it will rotate so we can work the pinion and the carrier uh, assembly separately. You flip it up and upside down, right side up. I think we're going to use an engine stand as the base for our uh, to hold the fixture and hold the uh, differential up. And we're going to use oh, probably, so I don't know, four bolts maybe uh, to hold that in. I've taken out the carrier bearing uh, holders just so it's flat uh, and we can design our unit, uh, our fixture. We're going to actually make three different fixtures. We're going to make a holding fixture, we're going to make a wrench driver to uh, pound the shims down, and then we're also going to make a holding assembly to go on the pinion flange uh, so that we can hold the pinion still while we tighten up the pinion nut. So we'll move on and see what we can do here. Uh, we're starting with the poster board. Uh, here's the back of the pinion, uh, back, or is it actually the bottom of the pinion, or of the uh, differential, excuse me. This is the bottom of the differential, but it's in the car. And we want a couple of inches overhang, and then we also want to have enough room to put our bolts in. So I'm thinking something like that, and then get a pin here, and then we're going to need uh, some side clearance because we're going to dust this thing. So let's say we're going to have oh, about that much side clearance. So uh, something like that. And so we'll just mark this here. We'll mark this here. And then we'll trim the length down this thing. Let's see. That puts this out on this side. Uh, about right about right there so we'll just decide overall once we get there so let's keep going and build ourselves a cardboard template all right so I think what we're going to do here is we're going to use these two bottom straight surfaces just to line up the bottom of it this is a point of reference we'll roughly center it across here we'll adjust this you know, maybe what I ought to do next is go ahead and just do it here and here and then draw a line underneath with this. So I know about what the right look is going to be. And we're going to fix up the outer dimensions, outer shape, uh, based on how we like it. Now one thing I want to do is go ahead and secure this thing in place. Um, I don't tell my wife that I stole one of her crayons. And uh, hope that won't mess it up, give it no trouble. But uh, we're going to find this hole, the crayons work really well to help find indentations. A lot easier with thinner paper, but you can do it with poster board too. So if we can find this other hole by hand, it's right in this area, and then we'll, we'll draw it out. So there it is. Hopefully you can see, but uh, let's see if I can get this where you can see it better. Uh, but basically, you can see it gives away the hole, shows you where it is. So we're going to go ahead and pop a couple holes in there just to hold it on, and uh, then we can do all our drawing and sketching. All right, we'll continue on. If you've never done it, um, you can take a piece of pipe, piece of tubing. It's a thin pipe. And you can basically make a hole punch that you can drive, put board underneath your paper, drive it with a hammer, makes a hole punch. Just grind a bevel around the outer edge and then it'll punch a hole the <laughs> same size as the idea of the tubing or the pipe. So that worked. Drop, drop, dropped. Pop two holes in there, got some bolts in there. We're going to start doing some marking. So I guess the next step is we're going to go ahead and Secure a number of bolt holes. Um, one of the things you want to do is cut this inner dimension uh, out. 
pretty close, pretty accurately. So I was just trying to decide how many bolts to use, but you can use as many as you want. We've basically got, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven available to us based on this, this structure. I don't think we need to go quite that far. I think we'll do four. I think we'll use these two that we have here, uh, these two up at the top in the corners. So we'll go ahead and mark those holes out and punch them out. Again, we'll use our, our crayon, find it right there. And we'll mark it with our crayon. Don't laugh at me and my crayons. And then the other one's over here somewhere, right about there. You don't even know exactly where it is, but it just keeps you from tracing a whole bunch of stuff you don't need to. Now I clearly see those two holes. We'll punch those holes and uh, and then we'll put some bolts in there just to hold everything in place while we finish out this uh, finish out the inner dimensions and so let's do that all right so now that we got these four bolts in there basically holding our pattern down and those will be the bolts that we hold it with later we're just going to take this raven knife and we're going to trace around the inside of the differential case and try to figure out what this thing's going to look like. So I won't bore you with this. Just get you an exacto knife or whatever kind of knife you like. I suspect when we get done, we'll have to trim it. It's not going to be exact. I'll have the patience for exact right now. But uh, yeah, you get the idea. We're going to just chase it around. And every once in a while I gotta stop and look at what it is that's in my way. I don't know if it's something to go around or what the devil. So I just take that off and look. Okay, so we went around this. Now we're going around this little spot here. And then we'll be dodging back in there in just a second. Alright, so go all the way around and hopefully be there. I guess it's worth mentioning, um, I've been sitting here cutting this thing out with my exacto knife um, but I could also crayon rub this and figure out where this edge is and cut it out with scissors as well it's whichever one you like I'm good with the way I'm doing it but that is an option too just to rub along the edge and it'll make you a pretty differentiable little mark along there that you can then cut out with scissors if you want I'm gonna keep going with what I got but that is an option that you can use One nice thing is this thing doesn't have to be by any means exact. You just need to be able to have enough clearance to work in the areas you're going to be working in. But uh, okay, the more exact it is, the more impressed people might be or might not be. You never know. So we're pretty much there now. I bored you with the last of it. So we can get rid of this. Don't need it. So there you go. That's basically the structure we're going to, the dimensions we're going to build. We'll of course round off some corners and keep it from being sharp and pointy. Um, the Originally I was going to leave it a little bit wider, put some gussets down. I'm going to go ahead and put those gussets from this point over. I'm um, using 316 steel which should be plenty good enough to hold it. But I should mark where gussets can go. On the top side I can still run gussets from here all the way back just to help bear the weight back to the engine stand on the bottom I marked it there and we can put gussets back to keep it from wanting to sag down that way and uh, yeah it'll work out great 
I think we're going to stay with the four bolt holes. So this is the general structure. I may shorten this up a little. Actually, I think I will shorten it up a little. Uh, there's no real need for it to go that long, um, that far out, I don't think. Um, as long as the, yeah, it'll rotate freely uh, around and not hang on anything. So we just take out our bolts. We'll use our bolt holes after we cut all the steel out and get it ground smooth to our liking. Uh, we'll use this bolt hole pattern to transfer holes into the steel. So this will be made out of steel. It'll have a number of gussets. I'm going to go ahead and create the gussets and tape them on. Just kind of create the general idea of what we're building. So in case there's any confusion, you'll be able to see it before it's actually fabricated. I much prefer doing that if possible. So there we go. That looks, that looks pretty sweet. And so the back gusset will come to this far. And the front gusset will come as far as this, not necessarily even that far. We'll have to get shorter bolts put in here. Uh, these are blind holes, We've got no outlet, and they're designed to hold on a bit, bit larger back panel plane. So I'll probably get some smaller bolts uh, for this, so that uh, we don't bottom out in the bottom out of the chunk. So that's a good start. Let's keep moving and uh, create some gussets and get those things going. So here we go. All right. So here's here's our pieces. At least a good start. This is the piece that goes on the differential. There are four gussets. You put two on the top, two on the bottom. They're literally just triangular pieces. Two of them are the same, or two pairs, whatever you want to say. And then uh, this is going to be the mock-up for the back piece. So this piece will sit back here, and there'll be a two-inch pipe comes out of here. It's got about three point, I think it's three and three eight, but two and three eight, two point three seven five, I uh, OD. So it's going to come out of the center here. Uh, this thing doesn't need to be this big, so what we're going to do is we're just going to tape it, tape it up, mock it up with tape, and then we'll trim the back plane down to what's reasonably necessary, and we should be ready to go. When we're ready to fabricate, uh, we'll cut all this, all the tape apart, and have our six individual pieces, which we'll cut out to make up the uh, make up the fixture. Well, seven counts the two-inch pipe. It's going to come out the back. And uh, so we'll get that taped up and then we'll do some trimming, make it look like we want it. All right. Well, we have our piece part made, uh, our jig made uh, template made for our fixture. We'll get it right in a minute. So this is roughly how it's going to look. It's not perfect, doesn't need to be yet. You'll notice the gussets here on the back side. They stop short because here we'll interfere with the metal on the differential and then the top ones we extend them out further just to give ourselves some more support also we didn't take them to a point excuse me we didn't take them to a point we left them a little taller than that so that just gives you more more support so let's go ahead and put it on here just a curiosity fit see how it looks just there we go well you know I did it I turned it <laughs> all right shouldn't really matter which way let's see if it matters that'd be an interesting find so we put it on that way let's see if we put it this way also works that way so yeah it's reversible hey i designed it that way yeah right all right so we'll go ahead and bolt it on the temporary just to see how it's looking and i don't think there's any interferences or anything to worry about one thing you will see is when you make this out of metal, these holes aren't going to quite be perfect. It's hard to keep the paper totally flat like the steel will be. So, don't be surprised if you have some, you have to elongate your holes a little or something. But, uh, you know, it should be pretty pretty darn close when you're done. So, yeah, I think we're, I think we're pretty happy with that. Uh, this thing does weigh a pretty good bit with the... 
particularly with the gears and bearings and everything installed. But I think out of a reasonable gauge of metal, I'm thinking we're going to go, oh, what's that? It's eight or three sixteenths I've got over there. But I think that's what we're going to use. So if we look at the side, you can see the gusset there stops short of this uh, metal boss on the side. And then the gusset on top comes right on down to short of that, that bolt. So I think that'll work great. We'll use our X-Acto knife. We'll cut all this back apart. We'll use the cardboard templates, cut them out, weld them together. And uh, the one thing that is missing, and I won't bother putting it on here, but is a piece of two-inch pipe that comes out the back. It's going to stick into the carrier, or into the engine stand. Now, you could do this for a number of applications. And you could put a piece of flat bar out here and clamp this thing on your workbench and then just be able to flip that over and do it again back and forth. You could uh, you could make it so that it fits in a vise, uh, a, a bench top vise. So the you know the options are I don't say they're endless, but you got a lot of options. You can do a lot of things um, with this type of a thing. So we're going to stop here on that probably probably tomorrow if everything cooperates. We'll start cutting steel, and then we can start welding steel. And then for the meantime, we're going to go ahead and make templates. For the other two things we need, which is the fixture for holding the pinion flange while I put on the pinion nut, and then the other one is holding the uh, uh, driving the shims down in in between uh, the bear the carrier bearing race and the sidewall of the housing. We've got to stick some shims down in there. So just a little little tap, a little hammer device. So. Let's get on and we'll design those and when we get the metal out, we can start them all. Okay, so now we're going to make a template for the pinion flange holder. What we're trying to do is we're trying to is to give ourselves a way of holding the pinion flange still while we tighten the pinion nut. And like there's a lot of ways of doing it. We're going to use one. Um, by no means the only one and most likely, certainly not the best. Um, that's the one we're going to use. So what we're going to do here is what we want is an, an extension. We want to be able to bolt it onto the pinion flange a couple places. And we want to extend past the flange on one end so that we can put, say, a half inch, uh, half inch square hole in it. And we can then put a half inch uh, breaker bar in and that'll give us our, our hold. So what we're going to do using a permit marker here sharpie and i'm going to hold it i'm going to make this circle proud by using the edge here it's going to hold it away and it's going to straight up and down it's going to go around in a nice big circle like so and then we're going to uh basically eyeball us two lines no, not very good, is it? We'll straighten it up. Two lines off of here. Man, we'll probably even bring it up higher. Something like that. And something like, like that. And then ultimately, we'll put a half inch hole in here. So we can stick a socket or a breaker bar in there. That'll hold this. So what we'll do first, we'll go ahead and get this outer shape cut. And then we've got to come in here. And we've got to clearance the inside so that we can cut that out and the flange will sit the uh, holder will fit flush against here so we'll cut this area out holder will fit flush against here then we can get to our pinion nut to tighten it so we'll eyeball this thing out and uh, see what we can see what we can cut out we'll show you when we get it cut out all right so we have some of the outer shape cut out not all of it I'm going to basically use this line that I just pre-cut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half, roughly, right about here. And then repeat this. Here we can see it, sorry. Repeat this cut. So 
so that the angles will be similar from side to side. Won't look quite as silly. And that's that. Trim this up just a little bit more. And we open that up. And so that's what we're going to make. And then, like I said, we'll cut us a half inch square. Probably going to cut it with the plasma cutter. And then just clean it up with a file. To hopefully make that where we can put a half inch, half inch breaker bar end into. And uh, then, from now we're going to take and we're going to mark out the center circle. So we can be cut away. And the... Uh, and that way it'll fit down over uh, that hole so we can get to the pinion nut. Otherwise, we can't tighten it if it's blinded off. So, let's get on with that. Alright, so we knocked us some holes in this thing. You can see. That basically, we put this down the ground. Put the pinion flange upside down. We mark centers of three holes. And we used our hole punch that we used previously. And it's a little bit too small. So, I guess we'll first try to get that a little more opened up. That may, may go, let's see. Uh, I think I can get it to go. For now, at least. When we drill it, well, obviously we'll use five to drill. These uh, pinion flange bolts are M12 1.75, I believe it is. And uh, so. I decided to put three because I can. No good reason to put three or two. Um, just felt like it, I guess. And uh, like I said, because I can. So, got that on there. The reason I did this is now I want to come back with our crayon and mark this center, mark the edge of this uh, collar in the middle. And then we'll use our X-Acto knife and we'll cut that out once we get it traced on here. You can also use a hammer. Uh, I could take a metal hammer here. Tap around the edge. You can see, hopefully, that's leaving a nice little mark for us to trace a uh, little trace line for us to follow so there's several a lot of ways to do this uh, and there's not a right and there's not a wrong whenever we cut the center out we're going to cut it proud so that uh, it'll you know comfortably fit down on there and then hopefully short of the half inch which we won't cut that we'll just cut that on a plate later so short of that we'll be ready to go so we'll cut that out by the way when we cut that out we're going to fold it in half again and then cut two sides together just because it's easier so here we go all right well yet another yet another tool templated to be cut i think i'm going to make this out of quarter inch steel i've got a little bit of quarter steel so that's the thickest i have but i think it'll be it'll be just fine again you can see here hopefully it fits down below this flange and here's where our half inch will be and we'll have clearance on the back that half inch to poke through here and not interfere with anything we're probably going to run it as close up to this as we can uh, I drew it where I drew it just for example but if I cut it fairly close up on the flange anyway so that's that probably round these corners off too I poke myself on everything and anything if we get concerned we can always put another bolt in here I think it's plenty good as is so another tool down the last tool we need to template out to make is the shim driver and uh, so let's get on with that that one's that one's fairly creative let's see what we can come up with in a minute all right next thing we're going to make is a device that we're going to use to tap the shims in right alongside the between the carrier bearing race and the edge of the differential housing um, this is the radius 
of those shims. Um, they are the same radius as the journal, uh, the bearing journal in the differential. We need a striking area, um, preferably, uh, you know, 90, uh, opposed to this center line of this arc. And then we need some type of handle to hold this tool with. Doesn't have to be a long handle, doesn't require, we're not creating torque, uh, but we need something out here. I'm realizing I got this backwards, but it needs to be like that. So it needs to be shaped. Let me go ahead and draw this down here. May not be right, but we'll just draw it on here so we can get this out of the way. Okay, so it needs to be shaped like that so that it can, uh, metal, which will be back here, can drive the race in. Now, it also needs to be shallower than this. Um, we don't want to be hammering against uh, the resting area for this, so we can come back, uh, not much, 16th and 8th, something like that. And then we want enough meat on it, so we'll, we'll bring it out here a little ways. Guesstimation. And, uh, and then it can come back here. Uh, straight, crooked, fancy curved, doesn't matter. And then, so again, we want our striking force right along here, about center of the arc. And then the handle will need to come out at an angle away. And uh, once we cut it, you'll see better in the, I'll show you in the, uh, in the differential housing what I mean. Let's go there here. So yeah, it's a lot of eyeballing here. This is not terribly critical. It just needs to function. So we're going to put a striking surface here. Something like that. We'll say center lines right about there. And then this can come down like that. Something. And then over here, we need our handle coming out at, I'm going to get a guess at it and say about this angle. Again, we don't need torque. We're just trying to hold this thing still while we hit it. So we can go like so. And then we can just go like that. Still leaves our striking area. And then like so. So something like that should work. Um, we'll probably wrap this with some electric tape, some rubber cushioning. And what you'll do is you'll just hold this part. Now put it up in there. Can't do it from here, can you? Just hold it like this. Tap, tap, tap. So we'll go ahead and cut this out. It may not be a winner. Uh, we'll have to go try it out and see. You gotta look at the clearance of the differential right here. You gotta be able to drive this thing. This thing needs to be able to butt up against where this thing butts and this handle not uh, affect or not hit contact the differential housing. So let's uh, cut this out and we'll go test it this thing on the housing. All right, got that tool ready to go. And uh, well, we've got it cut out, let's put it that way. Uh, so here's the tool cut out, here's the striking area here's the area where the bushings are going to be um, or the shims rather and then here's the handle don't worry don't worry the lines I just changed my mind on the fly what shape I wanted of it so if you look at it if we seat it right down where the bearing rest is it's great you can easily hold it uh, and easily hold it down there to drive the bearing of the shims in and we've got a handle that's been out of the way we've got a flat surface to strike and we should be able to just drive it right in one thing we want to be careful of is we're going to cut this prow when we cut it out of metal and then we're going to to uh, grind it down kind of file it we want this to be relatively smooth we don't want it to be too destructive we want it to have a pretty close shape so that we are imparting force evenly on the shims to make them go down in better and less drama or trauma. So 
uh, and you can see we talked earlier this is a little bit short so there's no reason that these have to drive into these rest areas where these pieces go these carrier bearing hold downs go so there you go we've got that piece to fabricate cut out there's not really anything to fabricate this piece that we'll cut out drill and put in the square hole opening and then this piece which a total of six pieces that will weld together drill and weld together so I think we're going to end this video here create a second video um, we won't show that much about fabricating this stuff because really what what all is there I mean cut out metal you can cut out metal with a plasma cutter you can cut it out with a grinding wheel uh, you can use a drill you can do any number of things to cut it out so that's fairly straightforward probably show a little bit of mocking it up tacking it up welding it out on this piece at least maybe cover how we finally decide we're going to be able to cut a square hole um, we'll figure it out but don't have not exactly sure what I'm going to do right now I suspect it'll involve a dremel and some cursing but uh, yeah so we'll, we'll come back and do that but more than anything I want to you know ultimately show it working um, and then figure out what we could do to make it even better so I'm hopeful this is useful to you one question that is going to most most surely pop up in the comments on these videos is why go through all this effort why not just pay to have somebody rebuild your rear end well a couple reasons one this is going on my 1951 Ford F1 rebuild project I'd like to do as much as I can I've never rebuilt a differential I'd like to learn how or I'd like to practice what I think I know at least and and be able to say I did it myself um, these tools are kind of once-off tools the odds of me rebuilding another differential in my lifetime probably aren't great um, I might well throw them up on eBay or somewhere and you know sell them just get a little bit of my a little bit of my time back I certainly won't make any money on it but um, if it works for me I might I might sell them uh, I don't expect to really need them but uh, yeah you never know and it's just something about being able to say you've accomplished certain things and in this case I'm trying to do as much as I can by my hand on this truck and uh, those things that make sense to do I think this makes sense the gears are supposed to be here in another day or two and uh, then we'll be you know once we get these these fixtures and tools fabbed up We'll be ready to go. So I'm going to post this video and then we'll get on with it.